My name is Cliff Kuhn. I'm the executive director of the Oral History Association. I was president in 2000, 2001. Well, I probably, the first story that comes to mind when I think of my favorite Oral History Association story was at this meeting 30 years ago in Pensacola, Florida, where we intersected with Hurricane Juan. And I drove seven hours in my Volkswagen into a hurricane from Atlanta to get here. Ended up stalled out in about a foot and a half of water about a block from the hotel. Had to push my car out of the, out of the water to get it going again and whatnot. Then Charlie Hardy and I had just met the previous year at a radio conference. We were going to a variety of conferences because we were among the two people in the country who knew had a radio background and history background. We presented here. I had a car, so we drove out on the, one of the barrier islands. We saw things were kind of closed down. And then literally a panel on a panel truck ripped off the truck and smashed the McDonald's w uh, window. It was time to get back to the hotel. Uh, about a third of the conference couldn't make it in. The keynote speaker couldn't make it in. It was also Halloween weekend. And there were these puddle jumpers coming from Tampa to Pensacola on these small planes. And the Delta flight crews on this Halloween weekend were wearing clown masks. So the passengers thought that they were literally descending into Dante's seventh circle of hell. And they'd, they'd get to the ground after this nightmarish experience. The ground crews were real, literally shaking their hands and congratulating them to making it. So the plenary speaker, um, the keynote speaker, Bill Luchtenberg, wasn't able to make it. And so the program planners kind of ad-libbed, and they got five of the veterans to tell their greatest oral history stories or their worst oral history stories. And the one I remember was Charlie Morrissey, been way back in the organization. And he told about being with a number of US senators at some resort somewhere. And one of them was Senator Sam Irvin from North Carolina. And they were going from one place to another, and Charlie was kind of trailing, and Sam Irvin was not aware that Charlie was tra trailing him. And Sam Irvin uh, sees this mirror, and in his deep North Carolina accent says, Mira, Mira, on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Why, you are, you sexy little devil. And he clicks his heels and goes on, completely oblivious that Charlie is trailing him. And it's just an absolutely funny story. So that would be story number one. Story number two comes from Birmingham, 1993, where, first of all, we had Julian Bond, the late Julian Bond, give an absolutely stellar luncheon speech that still sets the standard for any other uh, luncheon address we've ever had. And second of all, there had been a tour to the 16th Street Baptist Church. And on the tour was our friend, Brother Blue, street performer, storyteller, extraordinaire. And it turned out that his grandfather had been one of the Masons who had built the 16th Street Church. And as the bus went by, he gave a wail, sort of this primordial kind of wail. Then late that night, in the basement of the hotel, about 12.30, there's me, Blue, Rose Diaz, and a couple of Rose's kids. About 12.30 at night, no one else around in the basement. And Brother Blue starts to talk. and just go on for about the next hour and a half by himself. And he talks about the butterfly within, about his grade school teacher recognized the butterfly within him. And he tells this in this long kind of poem that's, you know, really, you know, fantastic. And it's this beautiful, intimate moment down in the basement of the hotel around 1230 in the morning in Birmingham. I'm sure all the people who are there who are still alive will always remember that moment. So those are two. Next year is our 50th anniversary. Uh, the 1966, the first National Colloquium in Oral History met at Lake Arrowhead uh, in Southern California. And um, the 50th anniversary celebration next year in Long Beach, 2016, offers us a real opportunity to look backward and reflect and appreciate what, how we as an organization, how the field have evolved over the last 50 years, and even more importantly, think where we are today and where we, we might be going into the future. Uh, in the office, we've been looking at uh, a lot of the artifacts uh, that uh, are from those early days, and they're fabulous, and they're really funny. And if ever there was a vintage era for uh, just outstanding photographs, it's the late 60s and early 70s, when fashions and hairstyles and so forth were a certain type that just mark it from that four or five year time period. And we found some great uh, photographs of 
longtime OHA veterans. I'm kind of thinking about using these photographs of blackmail to kind of fundraise for the university, for the for the association. Um, and, and at the same time, as it seems long ago and far away, many of the same concerns are obviously similar too, that the people who went to that first meeting were talking about what makes a good interview. They were talking about issues of access. They were talking about issues of quality, uh, democracy, inclusion. And so even though there's a great change, there's also great constancy. And throughout oral OHA's 50-year life up to this point, and hopefully into the next 50 years, we will continue to uh, kind of deeply share those, those values of inclusivity, democracy, and uh, high quality. It's my Alaska story. Uh, it was a midwinter council meeting in, in March 1999, and uh, they gave us an extra day to acclimate to the time change, and Lou Ann Jones and I were both on council, and uh, we decided to rent a car and tootle around, and being cheap, we rented a Geo, and uh, and Lou Ann says, you know, I've never been this far from my home, I've, you know, all of this sort of stuff. We we noticed that all of the other cars are not Geos, but are SUVs and trucks and big trucks at that and so forth. And okay, we're tootling along in our Geo, and out of nowhere, this blizzard comes up, and um, and and we run off the road, and. Out of nowhere again, this mountain man, and he looked like a mountain bearded big guy, kind of comes out of nowhere and gets our car back on our on the road and, and on the way back we have some reindeer sausage and, and then get back to Anchorage. And we tell this story to the people from Alaska and they knew exactly where we had been because there was a little dip in the mountains and the snow came over the 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 through the through the past that way, and that was exactly at that spot. It's like so funny. We were such idiots, you know, uh, going in our geo in the middle of Alaska in March and not even thinking about those kinds of things is just absolutely hysterical. <laughs> <laughs>